A Chinese squid fishing boat set sail with 33 people and only returned with 11. This story begins in the year of 2010. In that year in China, the value of squid started to increase significantly, which then increased the demand for squid fishermen. A corporation called Shangdong Rongchen Xinfa Seafood Corporation assembled a squid fishing vessel named Lu Rong Yui 2682 for the purpose of catching squid. The captain of the ship was named Li Chen Chen. The ship's mission was to set sail to the coast of Shule for two years to catch as many squid as possible. So how would you feel if someone offered you a job but you had to leave your country to go to a country that you don't speak the language of for two years? I'm sure most of you watching this video would probably reject that offer unless they gave you like a ridiculous amount of money. That is why the corporation in charge of the squid fishing voyage targeted poor Chinese laborers from all over China to get them on board. The corporation even faked all their fishing licenses and all their other legal documents required for this voyage. A vast majority of the workers hired have never been out to sea before in their entire lives. Each worker that was hired was told that they would receive around 45,000 Chinese RMB per year, which is around 7,000 American dollars. On top of their salary, the workers were also promised bonuses for the amount of squid that they catch. So the boat set sail for Chile from China on December 27, 2010. During this journey, things quickly take a turn for the worse not too long in, as the workers hired were working long and excruciating hours, occasionally working 18 hours a day, barely getting any rest throughout the day. Many of the workers regret going on this journey altogether and just want to go back to China at this point. Unfortunately, since all of the workers' legal documents were fake, they could not go back to China. The workers also began doubting that they would receive the amount of salary that they were promised from the company. Since they were not technically legal workers with legal working documents, they had very little rights to what they could do as they were basically slaves to the company. So about 6 months later, on June 11, 2011, is where things start to get a bit interesting. The madness that unfolded later on all started from a worker by the name of Liu Guido. Liu Guido was known to be one of the hardest working squid fishermen on the boat and one of the best at catching squid. Liu knew the pain that the other squid fishermen and himself were feeling, which is why he formed an alliance with 11 other squid fishermen to figure out a plan to get out of their misery. After the alliance was formed, they hijacked the boat, forcing their way into the captain's cabinet. They beat the captain up and held him hostage. There was a chef on board the ship who tried to rescue the captain but was stabbed to death with a knife. Liu Guido and his alliance demanded that the captain sail back to China immediately, which is what he did. A couple weeks of sailing later, the ship was near Hawaii. When the ship was near Hawaii, eight men on board the ship who were close to the captain were all murdered, as Liu believed the eight men would be a threat towards his alliance. Liu personally then killed another member who was a part of his alliance, as he did not think that member was loyal enough to him. After murdering those nine men, Liu Guido and his alliance understood what was at stake and understood that they were all murderers now, which is why they no longer wanted to go back to China anymore, so they decided that they were going to smuggle themselves illegally to Japan. Another twist of events occurs when a man by the name of Bao, who was a part of Liu's alliance, was in fear and felt that by the end of the journey, Liu would end up killing more people who were a part of his original alliance and only spare the ones closest to him. Bao was also a leader of a secret alliance with six members against Liu Guido. Bao decided that he was going to kill Liu before he could kill him. Liu found out about Bao's plan. What Liu did next was convince the captain to join his alliance and kill Bao which the captain had no problem doing, as Bao killed one of the captain's closest friends. The remaining five men who were a part of Bao's secret alliance were all murdered right after he was murdered. After about a month of sailing later, the ship was almost near Japan, when out of nowhere, the ship sprung a leak, flooding the boat. It is believed that the engineer of the ship sabotaged the ship and jumped off the board committing suicide. The ship had nowhere to go and the only option it had was to send out a distress signal for help. After sending out a distress signal for help, a boat came and rescued them. Only 11 members were left on the boat, and the 11 members were not all a part of Liu Guido's original alliance, as more people joined and some of the members were also killed off. All 11 of the members were sent back to China and investigations unfolded quickly to figure out what exactly happened on the ship. After investigations ended, out of the 11 people, some of them received the death penalty, some of them received life sentences, and others received short to long prison sentences. Please feel free to tell me what I thought about this story in the comment section. 